are reenacting uh, William McKinley's funeral, which would have taken place in September of 1901, which sadly was the same time that he was assassinated. Uh, today, we're commemorating his memory as a fallen hero of Ohio and the nation. And so, as part of that funeral, you would have had the Knights Templar, which is a part of the Masonic fraternity. They are the gentlemen you'll see in the black uniforms, the chapeaus, which are the hats with the feathers. It's kind of a dramatic scene to see. They're based actually on an 1860s uh, naval uniform. I'm not sure what that has to do with uh, medieval knights, but you know, everybody has to have a regalia. So they will lead the procession today. We uh, actually have a um, horse-drawn uh, uh, funeral wagon that will be here today. We also have representatives of the other branches of the Masonic fraternity with us today to reenact, to commemorate that, that uh, funeral of our fallen hero, William McKinley. William McKinley Lodge was formed in 1869 by William McKinley and some other leading citizens of Canton, Ohio. It was originally called Eagle Lodge. Upon the death of William McKinley, they petitioned the Grand Lodge of Ohio, and at that time, they changed the name of the lodge to William McKinley. William McKinley uh, joined the Masonic fraternity when he was serving in the Civil War. It's kind of an interesting story. Um, he was a captain in the Uni Union Army at the time, which was occupying Northern Virginia. And um, he had a good friend who was a surgeon in the Union Army, and he was accompanying him one day when he was going on his rounds. And during the rounds, he had checked on some Confederate prisoners who had been wounded. And McKinley noticed that the surgeon had taken out some paper and a pencil and given it to one Confederate prisoner. He'd given a little bit of uh, money to another. And M McKinley kind of challenged him about that and asked him why he was giving these extra comforts to our Confederate prisoners. And the surgeon responded that, yes, they are our enemy, they are our prisoners, but they're also fellow Freemasons. And the surgeon was a Freemason, and he felt he wanted to give as much comfort as he could to these soldiers obviously without violating his oath as an officer. McKinley was so impressed by this act, this act of brotherhood that bridged the Brothers' War, that um, he requested membership in the local Masonic Lodge. Now, that day he was initiated, it's kind of interesting, uh, he would have shown up in his best Union uniform, specially brushed the polished brass buttons, but the master, the president of the local lodge, happened to be a Confederate chaplain and so he would have had his best uniform too it would have been gray or beech nut and so um, in this brotherhood this ceremony of initiation there had to be even some extra electricity because of obviously at the time of war so uh, William McKinley joins in a, in a trying time in our history but he also exemplifies that brotherhood that Freemasonry is about not only in America but around the world. All of these brethren and brethren, members you see here are all members of the Masonic fraternity. They all have to belong to a blue lodge, and then they can belong to different appendant bodies. Freemasonry as a fraternity gets started in London, England in 1717. Um, it, it transfers from kind of a, a trade union to a, a social fraternity, which uh, no longer required that its members actually be working stonemasons, but had to be men of caliber who could use the philosophy of the builder's art to build a better person, so to speak, morality, um, character building. And so it starts very small with four lodges in 1717, and over, you know, almost 300 years now, it's spread all over the world, throughout the free world, and um, it's really meant to bring men together. Not men who are all the same, but men of various backgrounds, ethnic groups, religious backgrounds, but who all believe in a quality of life that is an example to, to everyone, really. And I am the right eminent Grand Commander of the Grand Commandery Knights Templar of the state of Ohio. What does that mean? Uh, basically, I am the, the top uh, ranking officer here in the state of Ohio for the Commandery, which is one of the, the Christian branch within Masonry here in Ohio as a subdivision of the Grand Lodge or the Masonic bodies in the state of Ohio, we are a capitular degree. Uh, that tends to refer to the building of the temple and the fact that there were columns. And on those columns there were fancy tops and all that, and we've taken our name somewhat from that. Um, it is a progression in ancient craft masonry. And there 
years ago there were what four five six degrees in the lodge now the lodge is divided up with three degrees and then the chapter has uh, four of the others we have 531 lodges and 116,000 masons and I oversee all those lodges and masons in Ohio to help them in their do their work throughout the state. We are reenacting uh, William McKinley's funeral 